Hi there, my name is Chris Harris and I'm from AlloyTutors.com and welcome to this video on Introduction to Entropy. Now in this video we're going to look at uh, a basic introduction to what entropy is uh, and how we can increase the value of entropy as well. We're also going to look at the link between entropy and temperature and physical states of materials as well. And we're also going to look at what we mean by the term standard entropy and how we can use entropy to explain uh, up normally um, unfeasible endothermic reactions. So we're going to start with what entropy is first. Now entropy is the measure of disorder in particles. Basically, um, basically we were looking at the number of ways that particles can arrange themselves and the more ways the particles can arrange themselves then the higher the entropy and that would be a favorable process. The entropy is given the letter S uh, and the little underground symbol above that tells us this is in standard conditions which we'll come on to a little bit later on. Now, entropy is one of these uh, types of energy that explains uh, why certain things will diffuse. So, for example, if we've got some deodorant, and if I was to spray the deodorant across like that, then obviously the deodorant will stay in one area, but then it will spread out and diffuse across all the particles in there and it will fill the room eventually. Uh, and this is called diffusion. The reason why this does this is because the particles that are inside the deodorant at the minute are in liquid form, but then when we press the, uh, the button on the top, the, it spreads out, turns into a gas, and entropically that's favourable because you have more ways in which the particles can arrange themselves, and so therefore uh, it will spread out across the whole room, and so entropically that is a favourable process. And this has got a diagram here just to explain this. So you can see we've got particles in a solid, uh, and then we'll go into particles in a liquid, and then particles in a gas. Now we're going from a solid to a gas, in any reaction is entropically favorable. And so therefore the value of the entropy, the entropy value of this, whatever the chemical would be, is gonna be more positive and it's gonna get bigger. Another way in which you can affect entropy is energy. Now particles have energy, we call it quanta. This is little packets of energy that each particle has. And the more energy they have, then the more ways in which these particles can arrange themselves, because obviously they're going to move towards the gaseous phase. So Energy uh, particles with more energy will increase the entropy value, hence the little packet of energy here at the bottom. Okay, and the other, the other one is um, the more particles that we have, the more entropy we have. So if we start with a reaction, we only have a handful of particles, and then after the reaction, we have loads more particles. In other words, we have more moles, then effectively we have increased entropy. And the reason why is because we have more ways of arranging lots of particles than just a handful of particles. So because we have that greater freedom to arrange the particles, then we say that entropy has increased. So when you're looking for chemical reactions, you need to look for any of these three ideas here. Either heating it up increases entropy, uh, going from a solid to a gas, uh, and also uh, creating more moles as well. Uh, that's entropically favorable. Uh, just according to this as well, if you take a salt and you dissolve it, dissolving substances also increases entropy because if you start from a very ordered salt crystal and that's going to be broken down into ions which are free to move around, that is effectively uh, more ways of organizing them than there is in a salt crystal. So therefore dissolving is also a positive ento uh, entropic uh, process as well. Okay, so we're just going to look at uh, the link between en entropy and temperature. So you can see here I've got a uh, profile here and this is entropy values against temperature and uh, it's showing how the entropy changes as we increase the temperature and we've got certain key features in this graph, notably this bit and this bit where the entropy increases quite significantly. And you can see here we start from zero. Now zero temperature and zero entropy effectively means a perfect ordered crystal which is not entropically favorable so to have zero temperature in kelvin is something called absolute zero and this is really difficult to get to and um, but at this at this step the we have perfect order we have a very nice ordered crystal and as we increase the temperature obviously at this stage it's a solid and the particles start to gain more energy so this is this energy bit here to do with temperature entropy starts to increase until we get to a stage where we get the melting point 
Now at this stage, the solid particles start to move significantly more. Instead of them just vibrating a little bit more, at this point, the melting point, we have the particles start to break away that little bit more, and there's more ways in which they can arrange themselves. And so that's why we have a significant increase in the uh, melting point, a significant increase, sorry, in the entropy value. And then obviously we go into the liquid, uh, and again, the particles get more and more energy, little packets of energy, and they start to move around that little bit more until we get to this step here, which is the boiling point. Now this is going from the liquid to a gas. So this is an entropically favorable process, as usual, uh, because we have many, many more ways in which we can arrange the particles. And just an important point to notice as well is that this jump is a lot bigger than this jump. And the reason why is because particles in uh, a liquid go into a gas. You can see the ways in which we can arrange this are significantly more because the gap between the particles is significantly bigger than compared to between a solid and a liquid. So the entropy value increases significantly between a liquid and a gas. Okay, uh, just coming to the last bit, which is standard entropy. And obviously, like I said before, um, the letter we use to represent entropy is the letter S. And we have the little underground symbol that next to it, and that just means, uh, which is this one here, it looks like an underground symbol. Uh, and this tells us that entropy is in a standard state. Now, the standard states and standard, sorry, standard conditions. Now, the standard conditions that we apply is 100 kilopascals, which is uh, what we call atmospheric pressure, uh, and then uh, 298 Kelvin as well, which is 25 degrees Celsius. Uh, and the units we use for entropy is joules per Kelvin per mole. And when we do calculations uh, in the other videos in this uh, playlist, then you'll be able to see uh, why that's really important because sometimes they don't give you uh, your energy in joules, sometimes they give you kilojoules, and you'll have to change the units as well. Uh, so entropy is basically um, the measure of one mole of substance, and all the values that you'll see in the data table is the entropy value for one mole of that substance. That's really, really important. Okay, just, uh, just a, a final thing really is the standard entropy, which is this value, uh, can be uh, different depending on the conditions that we put the substance in. So for example, say if we've got NO2 and NO, the complexity of the molecule uh, changes the value of entropy. Now, the more complex the molecule is, the higher the entropy value is as well. That's because there's more possible ways in which we can arrange that particle. So NO2 has got an entropy value of 240 joules per Kelvin per mole, whereas NO only has a value of 211 joules per Kelvin per mole. So, and that's because the complexity of that molecule isn't as, isn't as great. It's just got one oxygen and one nitrogen as opposed to two oxygens and two nitrogen. The other thing, not surprisingly, is the physical state. And maybe this is a little bit more obvious. So, for example, if we have the same molecule, NO, which is, in this case, we're going to use H2O, if we have a, a liquid water, this is going to give us an entropy value of 69.9. Uh, joules per Kelvin per mole, but if we take a uh, gaseous water, which is steam, that's got an entropy value of 189. Now that value is a lot bigger, uh, and that's because obviously a gas can arrange itself a lot more. There's more uh, ways in which that the particles can arrange themselves, so the entropy is obviously going to be a little bit higher. And uh, just a final point: the spontaneous endothermic reactions. Now, normally, endothermic reactions. When we say an endothermic, we're talking about enthalpy not entropy. So enthalpically, endothermic reactions are not favorable. A feasible uh, enthalpically-based reaction uh, is an exothermic reaction. But obviously, we do have endothermic reactions which are feasible. Uh, and the only way we can really explain this uh, for the purposes of A-level is that entropically, this reaction must be favorable. Uh, and so uh, that will come into uh, some use when you do something called Gibbs free energy, if that's on your syllabus. Uh, and Gibbs free allows us to predict whether a reaction is feasible using enthalpy and entropy values. But uh, that's it, like I say, just a, a, quite a lot of information, just a quick introduction to entropy there. Uh, there is calculations on the playlist as well, of course. Uh, so uh, if you want to have a look at the calculations and how we use the equations regarding entropy, then uh, just have a look at the playlist and you find it all there. That's it. Hope it helps. Bye.